Hello, my name is Derek Strickland. I am an no engineer on the Nomad team here at HashiCorp. Uh, you can find me on GitHub or on Twitter at Derek Strickland. Uh, and today we are going to talk about the Nomad Open API project. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Open API specification, uh, you can find it on the internet at spec.openapis.org. Uh, they're currently on version 3.1. Uh, the specification is essentially an open standard for how to define a schema for an HTTP API. Uh, and why would you want a schema? Well, if you've got a schema for your API, then machine tooling um, can read that schema uh, and do interesting things. And in today's uh, demonstration, we're going to show how the machine tooling uh, built by the Open API Generator project can be used to generate clients uh, in a number of languages. Uh, if you go to the openapigenerator.tech website, uh, which is the main uh, website for that project, you'll be able to see a list of generators. Um, and this is an incomplete list. If you go to their GitHub repo, you'll see that there are a lot more. Today, we are going to focus on uh, generating a new client for the, uh, the Nomad API uh, with the c -sharp Net Core uh, generator. So let's go take a look. Um, so we kind of talked about what the specification is. Let's take a quick tour of our repo. Um, you can find our repo on GitHub at github.com forward slash HashiCorp forward slash nomad hyphen open API. Um, in that repo, uh, there are a few things of interest. Uh, the most important thing is under this V1 folder, you'll find an open API YAML file, openapi.yaml file, and that is the actual specification uh, document. Um, you can see I've got most of the, the elements of the document collapsed so that you can kind of see a high level outline. But inside each one of these sections, if you were to expand them, you'd see a bunch of YAML like this that sort of describes the surface area of the API. In this case, uh, there's a parameters dictionary entry that defines all the possible parameters. Um, and where, whether they exist in a query string and, or a path or a header and uh, you know what their name is, whether they're required and what their schema type, yada, yada. And all that kind of, that same sort of structure uh, flows through all of these different areas of the specification document. Um, so we've, we've generated that document for you. As you can imagine, if you look at this, uh, this document is almost just a hair shy of 8,300 lines of YAML, which is a lot of YAML to try to maintain by hand. We don't do that. We built some custom tooling to look at the existing API. Uh, I should mention that the open API specification is sort of optimized for a design first approach where you build the spec document um, using some sort of an editor studio like Stoplight. Um, but in this case, we had an existing API, uh, and there's not a lot of great tooling for generating a specif specification file from existing code. So we built our own, and that uh, is over here in the generator package. Uh, I'm not going to cover that much today. You shouldn't have to interact with that too often, if ever. Um, but if you're interested in the metaprogramming that went into, into generating the spec from existing source code, feel free to take a look at that. Uh, and let us know if it helps you in your projects. Um, so using that generator package, we were able to, to create the specification document. So that's pretty cool. Now we have a spec doc. What can we do with it? Well, we can use it to generate uh, client code in different target languages. Um, and so how do we do that? Well, we have a make file over here. And in this make file, we've defined um, some you know, different different commands. You're welcome to take a look at the different make targets. The one we're going to focus on today is make v1, which is going to make uh, v1 clients for a number of languages uh, using the specification document that was generated by our generator package. And what it does is just a series of Docker run commands. Okay. And these commands uh, are pretty, you know, sort of parameterized. And then you'll notice that we just kind of feed it a different directory uh, as the last argument for each target language. Um, and those directories are all over here in the clients folder, which is another folder of interest for you. And when you create a new uh, client, this is where uh, it should get output if you configure everything correctly. If you decide to add a new target language and your code does not end up over here in a, the exact same directory structure, uh, the PR is probably not going to get approved. Uh, it, 
And, uh, but you know, if you just need it to generate it for yourself and you're not planning to, to put it in a PR, then that's fine too. Um, all of these directories have the same structure of, you know, uh, generator name, V1. And then very important underneath each one of those directories is a config.yaml file that's worth mentioning. Uh, the configuration file has a, a set of common um, parameters and, and then a set of parameters that are config settings rather that can change based on which generator you're using. So if we go back over here to the um, generator list, you can click on any, you know, whichever target language you want, or if, if your language is not in this list and you're doing it from the repo, sort of a similar process, they'll all have a markdown file in their, uh, in their uh, folder inside GitHub. And that markdown file is gonna tell you, hey, these are the config options that you can set for your particular uh, generator target. And in the case of .NET, some of them have, you know, a handful at most. The .NET uh, core, or sorry, pardon me, C sharp core, uh, net core package uh, or generator has a ton. Um, I've only set a few. Um, and in my case, I just said, hey, here's our license ID, Mozilla Public License version 2.0. Uh, don't generate timestamps inside the source code because that can create, you know, churn on PRs for things that didn't change. And uh, I want you to call the package the nomad.client. Uh, so um, back to our quick agenda. Um, all right, so we kind of completed the tour of the repo, but how do we actually do this? Um, how do we add a new language? Um, so if we go back to our handy dandy make file, like I said, uh, I've gone ahead and created the correct directory structure. I've created a config file. Now, in a typical use case where I want to add a target language that is going to get generated every single time uh, the you know uh, the workflow runs, either whether it be CI or a manual build, I would just basically copy one of these, paste it to the end of the list, and then change the package name in that path, and it should all just run. But if I were to run, you know, we want to actually see the output of running this command. Um, today. So in order to save us a little time, I just built a one-off make target for just the C-sharp net core. As you can see, I've already run it once over here. So apologies, I'm, I'm a big reveal. Uh, just imagine that didn't happen. Um, so I've created this one-off make target and we are going to run it from the command line. So we just say make C-sharp net core and it's gonna run for a second. And this one's particularly fast compared to a lot of languages. Um, some of them take quite a while and boom, it's done. And it just generated all this client code for us. So what's in that client code? Well, a few things. Um, we get a solution file, we get a readme file, we get a all, check this out. We get generated documents. Now, again, this doesn't, something that we at HashiCorp built. This is whoever wrote the, the net, C-sharp net core generator uh, had to supply the appropriate information uh, in, in that upstream package to, to generate all this, but most, pretty much all the authors do or they, they don't get published. You end up with, with full docs for your API uh, that you can put into source control, which is cool. Um, you start with a high level readme, which looks kind of like this. And if some of this generated output in the docs isn't exactly correct or, or not what you expect to see, just remember that is actually uh, coming from the upstream open API generator uh, package from that project. And so to fix the docs, you either have to override them in your config or you've got to contribute to that upstream uh, generator um, project to get to reflect the change in your docs. But it's pretty cool. Um, and here's an example of what your code might look like uh, if you were going to consume one of the generated clients. And I'll point out that it's a little bit boilerplate-y. Um, you can see here, you got to create a new configuration every time you want to run a client and you've got to you know, add certain things and so on and so forth. You got to define all your, um, your API and, and, and set these you know, parameters that happen again and again. Uh, in the case of Nomad, like almost every endpoint accepts a set of eight or so query string parameters. And so you don't want to be defining that over and over again. So the point I'm making here is that the generated code is completely usable if you just want to um, maybe uh, 
call one or two functions uh, against the API. Uh, oh, real quick before we move on, let's take a look at, you know, the, it's here's an example of generated documentation for a specific method. So it's, it's you know, it's really nice. It's really user friendly. However, as I just mentioned, it's also pretty boilerplate, -y, right? So like every one of our endpoints is going to take this job name, or pardon me, this region, this namespace, index, wait, stale, prefix, token, per page, next, like all those, you don't want to be writing that again and again and again. So uh, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to expose a significant portion of the API surface. So another thing that we built for y'all is uh, over here in this V1 folder. Uh, it's a reference implementation of how you could write a like a service layer on top of the generated client um, and sort of an abstraction over the boilerplate. And uh, in the API package, if you want to take a second to peruse through it, you might gain some inspiration about how you could you could write some uh, framework type code to um, reduce the boilerplate in the code that you have to write. Another option you have, if you're really into, into mustache templates, you could actually write a template and inject it into the generator workflow through the config file, uh, the config.yaml file, and say, hey, here's an extra template I want you to execute. Send the object model to that. And you might generate your whole service layer. Uh, and then you don't need to be quite as frameworky because it's generated code. And um, you know it could be uh, boilerplate, uh, wouldn't really matter as much. Um, but in our case, we wrote a little framework around it because we uh, we wanted to experiment with all the all the different edges. Um, we're at a 0 0.1.0 uh, release right now. We've stopped for uh, a request for uh, comment phase. We're hoping folks will come and, and raise issues with with the implementation. Let us know what works well, what doesn't. Um, and uh, so just an example of, of what we did in our reference implementation, um, you know, we just kind of wrote helper methods around things like, hey, get me all the allocations for a job. Um, and we wrote some frameworky stuff like, hey, you know, call and, you know, execute a query, which means a get. Uh, and you can look at the internals of that for the, for, for the, uh, for exactly how that's abstracted away. Um, uh, but yeah, and then by by putting this service layer on top of the boilerplate code, you can then make simple one line calls um, to your client API surface um, like that, which would be more much more preferable if you're using a ton of different endpoints from from the uh, generated client. So let's see from here. Let's talk a little bit about next steps. Um, we looked at the, the output of what happens for each client, the docs that get generated. Um, we are currently looking for help. We would like, uh, we are a go shop and we need folks that are experts in other languages to, to kind of come in and help um, shepherd the community along. Um, we've, we've built a reference implementation in Go. It'd be neat to have one, uh, other reference implementations in other languages. They could be done in your repo. They could be done in our, you know, ours, whatever. We'll work it out. Um, we uh, we have a, some open issues that we are always looking for help on. Some of them are uh, language specific. For instance, we've got some open issues right now in the upstream Python generator. Um, could would love some Python expertise to come in and help us figure out that upstream challenge so that we can uh, we can fix uh, we we can get a PR submitted there so that we can consume it and fix some of the generated output. Um, we're also looking, we got some endpoints that are streaming in nature. The open API spec does not handle streaming endpoints uh, the way we would like. There are, there are workarounds, but it isn't the approach we'd want to take. Um, and so we're looking at using another uh, complementary specification based off of open API called async API uh, to uh, encapsulate and define and expose our streaming endpoints like the event stream and exec. Um, so we'd love, uh, if you've got async API expertise, um, we'd love to get your input and help on building that out. Um, we have a community uh, meeting every month. You can uh, contact me at dstrickland at hashicorp.com uh, if you would like an invite to that monthly community meeting. Uh, and um, we are always looking for pull requests. We're always looking for feedback. It, raise an issue. Even if you don't have a pull request, you don't know how to fix it. If there's an issue that you're having with consuming it, please let us know. Uh, and we hope to see you on GitHub. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.